from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. A horrific scene at a protest in Virginia today, a car ramming into the crowd. Good evening, I'm Vanessa Van Hefty. One person was killed, more than a dozen hurt. In the last few hours, a state official announced the suspected driver is in police custody. ABC's Lana Zak is tracking the developing situation. The usually quiet college town of Charlottesville, Virginia turned into chaos. White nationalists clashing with counter protesters. The protesters upset over the city's decision to remove a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee from a downtown park. When suddenly a car barreling down the street rammed into counter protesters, running them over. Others forced to jump out of the way. ABC's Eva Pilgrim was there. You could see people laid out on the street, paramedics working on them, people wrapping up their legs. Charlottesville Mayor Michael Singer saying in a statement, I am heartbroken that a life has been lost here. I urge all people of goodwill, go home. Virginia's Governor Terry McAuliffe declaring a state of emergency. The crowd ordered to disperse. You're going to leave the area now. President Trump condemning the violence, but urging both Great groups people. to set aside Great their people. differences. This has been going on for a long, long time. It is no place in America. What is vital now is a swift restoration of law and order and the protection of innocent lives. You will not replace us. Today's rally after a Friday night march by white nationalists resulted in brawls with protesters countering the event. Of course, there have been many injuries in all of those brawls, but in this specific attack, police say that there were 19 people injured and one fatality. They have yet to release that name as they notify next of kin. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. And this picture shows just how devastating that impact of the crash was. A photographer with the Charlottesville newspaper Daily Progress took this photo. You can see people flipped upside down, flying through the air as that car slams into the crowd. And more tragedy out of Charlottesville. Virginia State Police say a helicopter crashed outside of the city. Police say two people on board were killed. They say that helicopter crash was related to the protest, but they are not saying how. Now to breaking news here at home. A driver on the run from police leading officers on a dangerous chase. 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo is live in City Heights where the chase went through an elementary school. Laura. Yeah, this is Central Elementary School and there's still a lot of damage left from this pursuit. I want to show you this gate here is a replacement gate. It was put up after the driver drove through here. You can see the original gate is all the way across the playground. Now police pulled the man over when they saw a truck wanted in connection with a shooting from a few weeks ago. The man pulled over, but then he took off. The suspect led officers through several streets before he drove through the elementary school. He damaged fencing on both sides of the school. The suspect then drove through the San Diego Fire Station's property nearby. He crashed into another chain link fence. The fence got stuck in the truck's tires and stopped the truck. The man got out of the car with a gun at the end of the pursuit. Police ordered him to put it down and he did. The suspect started resisting arrest so officers used straps to get him into the patrol car. They haven't told us what shooting this pursuit is connected to, but they did tell us and inside the man's truck. Reporting live in City Heights, Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Thank you, Laura. Today, people in Vista came together to protest what they believe was the wrongful death of a man shot and killed by a sheriff's deputy. Deputy Christopher Villanueva shot Jonathan Cornell 16 times in Vista last month. The sheriff's department says Cornell raised a covered hand and deputies believed that he had a weapon. Witnesses insist he was on the ground with his hands up. Cornell's family is claiming Villanueva went too far. Police brutality needs to stop. Because it's not the first time uh, a citizen dies in the hands of police. It's, it's not going to be the last. Deputy Villanueva was involved in another deadly shooting last year. He was cleared of any wrongdoing in that case. This investigation is still underway. Right now, sheriff's deputies are looking for this man. They say he is dangerous, wanted for robbery, child cruelty, and drugs. His name is Kevin Manriquez, and he is known to spend time in Spring Valley. A $1,000 reward is being offered for any information leading to his arrest.
And turning now to weather, taking a live look outside a sunny summer day in San Diego. 10 News Pinpoint Weather Anchor Jennifer De La Cruz tracking some nice weather this weekend. Nice weather this weekend. Couldn't ask for better weather. Perfect San Diego weather. Woke up to some clouds on the coast this morning, but they did clear out nicely. We're starting to see them roll back in again, taking you live outside right now to our sky cam in Del Mar. Not looking too bad. It's a little bit overcast as those clouds continue to roll in this afternoon. Your temperature right now is 73 degrees in downtown. San Diego 81 in El Cajon 81 in Poway cooler in Carlsbad in the 60s 71 for you in La Jolla. So we're slightly cooler than where we were at this time yesterday. We're going to see a cooling trend by just a couple degrees into the next couple of days before we start warming back up again. Your evening planner will be cooling down to 69 degrees by 8 o'clock tonight. We're going to see more clouds rolling in and patchy fog along our coastline, but we do have a warm up coming up. I'll track that for you coming up in your seven day forecast. All right, Jen, thanks now to a crime alert. An armed robber still on the loose after barging into the Sears at the shops at Carl's bad last night. Police say he stole a phone from a display case. Employees confronted him both inside and outside the store, and that's when he showed a knife. He eventually took off into the brush between the store and the 78. There is pretty much nowhere right now that anyone with a low income or no income can get a roof over their heads. We've seen the studies. We've heard from politicians, but today was about the people directly affected by the housing crisis here. 10 News reporter Hannah Mullins is live with how a local grassroots group is taking on homelessness in a very unique way. Hannah. They are thousands sleep right here on the sidewalk. They sleep right behind those bushes. So the San Diego Emergency Housing Alliance is calling on city leaders to do something about it. Between songs, Jeffrey Hayes heard stories like Amy's. Something I never thought I would experience. Before. She was an attorney with a three bedroom home, but she couldn't keep up when her son got sick. They're not all drug abusers. They're not all crazy, but if they stay out there long enough, they will be crazy. With a home and a steady IT job, Hayes planned for his future, but multiple sclerosis robbed him of a lot. Depleted my uh, 401k, my uh, unemployment, and my severance package, and then I lost my house. There are about 1,200 emergency shelter beds in San Diego, but more than an estimated 9,000 people in need really hard. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in tents. I've had tents stolen. He couldn't rent with high housing costs. Everything I ever had in the world I lost. I don't even feel I have a voice. Today he did and his story struck a chord with people. I, my hands are shaky. I have seizures now. There wasn't a happy ending since too much time on the streets will be a dead end. There is no way to catch up. I can't dig my way out of this. He's clinging to what little hope he has. He's calling on city leaders to take action and San Diegans to show compassion. It's great to see that there are a lot of people who care. The group wants the city to stop doing things like ticketing homeless people and start doing things like transforming those parking lots. We're live downtown, Hannah Mullins, 10 News. Thank you, Hannah. Now to the developing story in North Korea. President Donald Trump reaching out to North Korea's neighbor as the rogue nation issues its own warning to the United States. ABC Stephanie Ramos reports the president is also assuring the governor of Guam he's behind them. North Korea's biggest trading partner urging restraint from both sides. In a phone call, the president of China asking President Trump to refrain from further action that will aggravate tensions on the Korean peninsula. This as North Korea issues a statement saying if the Trump administration does not want the American empire to meet its tragic doom, they had better talk and act properly. The country, which calls the situation a, quote, tragic comedy, is considering missile strikes in the waters off Guam in the wake of U.N. economic sanctions. So-called uh, indicators and warnings where we'd be looking at North Korea to see if they were mobilizing, you know, if, if uh, ships were leaving ports, if people were coming out of the fields to take up arms. North Korea's latest rhetoric in response to Trump's string of warnings, saying on Friday the U.S. military is locked and loaded. If anything happens to Guam, there's going to be big, big trouble in North Korea. On Friday, Trump called Guam's governor to assure him. Mr. President, as the governor of Guam representing the people of Guam, and as an American citizen, I have never felt more safe or so confident 
uh, with you at the helm. The president even promising a tourism boom. Your tourism, you're going to go up in uh, like 10 falls. <laughs> North Korea not backing down. If he goes offshore and demonstrates that he can ring that island with those four missiles, he will have demonstrated the next step in a nuclear capability, and that is accuracy and would be a very, very disturbing uh, indication. Worldwide, American allies, including Japan, South Korea, and Australia, all vow support. But a rebuke from German Chancellor Angela Merkel saying that an escalation in language is not the answer. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Washington. Meantime, here at home, gas prices are on the rise. The average cost of a gallon of regular in San Diego County is now over $2.97. According to AAA, it went up about a half a cent overnight. It is now 1.2 cents higher than a week ago, 8 cents higher than a month ago, and 30 cents higher than a year ago. You can always find the cheapest gas at 10news.com. Just look under the traffic menu. Last night's winning Mega Millions lottery ticket went to one lucky person in Palos Heights, Illinois. They are now $393 million richer after buying that winning ticket from a mom and pop barbecue joint. Last night's jackpot, the fifth largest in the game's 15 year history. The winner hasn't come forward yet, but they bought that ticket right there at Nick's Barbecue. It's a, a very small suburb. The restaurant's owner is going to get a payday too. That owner will get about $500,000 for selling the lucky ticket. We found out about midnight. One of our uh, managers who uh, he was watching, I guess, and uh, I was sleeping actually and uh, woke me up and we've been up all night. So we're very excited and uh, it's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, now if you um, didn't win, you haven't missed out on your chance for big bucks. The jackpot for tonight's Powerball game, 356 million. The odds of winning, one in 292 million. An emergency landing, the scary situation for a Navy pilot forced to eject from his jet. And heart stopping video a teenager home alone when a stranger comes knocking, chasing him through the house. What the intruder did next that made things even more frightening for the boy. A mild and sunny weekend on the coast, but we'll get a brief break from the heat this week. I'm tracking cooler temps coming up in your 70 forecast.